Well, hi there, this is Scott Duffy. And in this video, we're going to set up a service fabric cluster from scratch within the Azure portal and going to use Visual Studio 2017 to deploy a service fabric application into it. So we got a lot to do here. So let's get into it. So just so that you know, I'm going to be using the, the community edition of Visual Studio, the Visual Studio 2017. It's downloadable, free version of the Visual Studio IDE. And you do need to prepare your environment by having the Microsoft Azure Service Fabric SDK. So if you just Google Microsoft Azure Service Fabric SDK, you will get to a page like this where you can download and install the SDK. So we go into Microsoft Azure and we choose a service fabric cluster type from the marketplace. I'm going to say create. Now you give it a name. So I'm going to say AZ service fabric cluster and my initials. And you'll see here that it's fully qualified. So it has to be unique. We get choice of operating system. There's a couple of Linux versions and there's a bunch of Windows versions. So I'm just going to pick the default, which is the 2016 data center with containers. We have to enter user ID and password. So give me one second for that. We have to create a, or use a resource group. Since service fabric does create a seven or eight different resources, I'm going to create a brand new resource group for that and we give it a location. Now we need to, you know, the fundamental part of a service fabric is you can have one, two or three node types and you have a quantity of nodes within each type. So we just need one node type for this example. And we're going to configure uh, the required settings. I'm going to call this a basic node. There's a very limited naming up to nine characters for the node type. I don't need a uh, durability for this search uh, selecting VM size. I'm just going to take the smallest recommended size because we're, this is only going to live for a couple of hours. Now we do have the option when we're testing to try this single node cluster, but in this case, I'm going to create a three, I'll make it a five node cluster. Okay. We do need to enable a reverse proxy in order for the visual studio to be able to connect to this. So I'm going to say, okay. And then I'm also going to say, okay, to that, we do need to use a security key. So the security key is used for the publishing from visual studio. You are going to create a key. You're going to have to choose your, your key vault and give the certificate a name. And when you click the OK button, it's going to go off, create a key, and then you can download that key. Okay. So I've actually gone through this process already. I'm going to close out of this. We're going to go back to the home page and I've got a service fabric up and running. That was that I just did a few minutes ago before starting this video. So the key to this is this is a three node fabric, not the five that I was going to make create before, but you'll see here, I can see my nodes. It deployed successfully. Everything's up and running. I need to copy the client connection endpoint because that is, that is important. And let's switch over to visual studio and we can see about this, uh, sample application that we're going to be using. Now for the code, I'm not going to create anything from scratch. I've chosen from the Azure samples, GitHub repository, the service fabric .net getting started sample. So download this and go into visual studio with it. This is visual studio. This is the code. Uh, this is the de deployment, but this is the package that comes with it. There's a lot of different applications, web services, stateful, stateless actor, etc. We're going to go into the getting started application. We're going to build it, make sure that it builds on your local first, obviously it builds on mine. Then I'm going to say publish. Now the key here is to put the correct connection endpoint that we took from the portal here into the, the connection endpoint. The other key 
is that we have to use, we have to install the key that we downloaded from the Azure portal. So if I go into, see that's example. If I go into my documents here, I downloaded the key from the Azure portal. Um, let's look at it within the key vault. So I have the key that I downloaded from the from Azure. I can click install and I want to make sure that it's installed as a, a, a machine certificate into my personal certificate store. So you can see here that it is inst installed as a machine certificate. Okay. We'll see that with a restart of Visual Studio that the connection endpoint is accepted. There's a green check mark. If I was to click the publish link, which I will do, it will build this solution and will start uh, start the publishing into the uh, service fabric cluster. So we're, that's going to take a few minutes actually. So let's pause the video and we'll come back when it's deployed. So I'm just watching the deployment about to finish up here. I can see that it's now in the deploying of the individual projects within this file. So we can see that this web service is ready. The publication succeeded. Okay. That took just over one minute to deploy. Now, if you go into the portal, you'll see there's this service fabric explorer. Um, if you, if you're able to get into there, then you'll see that, uh, look at that. We have our getting started application deployed into our three node service fabric and yeah, Microsoft's Azure service fabric is now managing the running of this application, distributing it within the three nodes. If we were to start to uh, hammer the performance of one of these, it would then distribute more services to, to make up for it. So that's pretty much what I want to show you. This is a creation and a deployment of a service fabric app into the Microsoft Azure service fabric. If you like this video, uh, let me know if you have questions, of course, let me know. Thanks.